Hi guys, how's it going? I hope everyone's doing okay. Today we're gonna go through the basics of color grading. And I'm gonna show you step by step on how we color grade our footage to get the best cinematic results. A little bit about me, I am a former law student turned full-time filmmaker. I run a video production business with my best friend Jono and we have been doing this for around six, seven years now. Color grading has always been a very difficult thing for beginners to learn and I was no exception. It took a lot of experimentation and amateurish looking footage for me to get to a standard I was finally happy with. But if you can color grade well, you can easily separate yourself from the rest of the pack. In saying that, I want you guys to think of color grading as a nice delicious cake. And it is made out of three key ingredients. Number one, exposure. Number two, white balance. Number three, colors. If you get all these three ingredients right, you're gonna have a really good color grade. But if you miss out on any one of these three ingredients, you're gonna be left with a very bad cake. Anyways, watch to the end because I'm giving out a free S-Log3 LUT. I'm going to show you exactly how I use it in my daily projects. So make sure to watch to the end. So our first ingredient is exposure. Exposure is basically the brightness of your footage. Obviously, you want to get this correct in camera when you're shooting. But there are times where you just need that extra tweak in editing to make the shot look perfect. So to explain exposure, it's basically split into three parts. Highlight controls the brightest part of your frame. Midtones controls the middle part and shadows control the darkest part of your frame. So in a normal looking shot, your highlights would be the sky, your midtones would be your subject and your shadows, well, will be the darkest part of your frame. So let's look at this frame. As you can see, it's a bit dark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and brighten up the exposure. Go to this triangular icon over here and go click color board. So in color board, you can see four dots over here. The left dot is your overall exposure. The blackest dot is your shadows. Remember what I said about shadows controlling the darkest part of the frame. And then this dot is your mid tones and the whitest dot is your highlights. Now, what we're going to do first is we're just going to raise up the overall exposure here. And then I'm just also going to raise up my highlights just a little bit. And I'm just going to watch it back. That looks pretty good. So this is before the adjustment and this is after adjustment. Okay, moving on to another example. In this shot, you can see that some parts of the skies are blown out. So what we're going to do is we're going to try regain some of the details from the sky by lowering our highlights. So go over here, create a color board again and try decreasing the highlights. You see, as we're decreasing the highlights, we're able to bring in some of the details of the cloud back. When you bring in more details from your shot back, you're making the image look more cinematic. When you have like blown out images like this, your footage tend to look more amateurish. So look at the difference here. It's the clouds are blown out, you can't see the details, just by lowering the highlights. Look at that, we've regained so much details here. There's actually a very useful tool in Final Cut Pro that you can use to help you with your exposure. So if you click Command 7 and make sure you're on Waveform and Luma, and right here you can see basically a wave graph over here. So this is basically an exposure graph. It goes from zero to a hundred, as you can see, before we adjusted the highlights, the waveform is clearly over 100. So what that means is anything over 100, we're losing details in that frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it all the way back so that it's just below 100. So in doing that, you're saving as much detail in your shot as possible. Same thing with your shadows, right? If the waveform is going beyond zero, 
you're kind of losing details in the blacks in your frame. So what you want to do is to just to bring it before zero. And there we go. So that's a very useful tool to use. And last example right here. Again, this is a really nice shot, but it's a bit too dark for me. So go to color board. Try raise up the exposure. I don't want to raise it up too much because when you raise up the overall exposure, you're going to raise up the shadows as well, which is not what we want. I want to keep that nice contrast going. So I'm just going to raise up the highlights. Look at that. The skin's getting brighter. Her dress is getting brighter. And I'm going to raise up a little bit of that mid tones. And I'm going to just lower back the shadows. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. So this is without the adjustment. It's just nice and dark. Well, it's not nice, but it's just dark. And then this is with the adjustment. Beautiful. The second ingredient is white balance. White balance is basically the temperature and the tint of your footage. If your white balance is incorrect, oftentimes you're going to get really unnatural looking skin tones and the things that are supposed to be white in the frame, it won't be white and that's going to look quite unnatural. In most cases, having the correct white balance is super important when color grading your footage. So in this shot, as you can see, the white balance is actually decent. The, our camera was on auto white balance and this was the result of it. It actually doesn't look too bad. But as you can see a bit from the skin tones, it does look like it's a bit yellowish. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here. We're going to go on color wheels and at the bottom of color wheels, you're going to see temperature and tint. For temperature, if you move towards the left, you're going to make the image more bluish. If you move towards the right, it's going to make it more warm. Regarding the tint, if you move towards the left, you're going to make the image look more green. If you move towards the right, it's going to be more purple. All right. So what we're going to do with this image is we're going to make it more bluish. I'm just keeping an eye out on the hot hat here to make sure that it's going to be as white as possible because this was before like it, it was it's white, but I can see that it's a little bit green and uh, yellowish. So I'm just going to move it to its left. So it looks completely white. Just a tad more. Beautiful. And let's see if I need to adjust the tint whatsoever. I'm actually gonna adjust the tint one point towards the right so that it looks more purple. And you can have a look at the difference here. So that is without the white balance adjustment. And this is with the white balance adjustment. Now we're gonna move on to a next example right here. So in this shot, it, it definitely looks a bit off. It looks a bit too green for my liking. The skin tones isn't, isn't popping out. It doesn't look right, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to color wheels again. And we're gonna try, oof. Because it's a bit green, we're gonna try and add in more purple to it. And we're just gonna shift the temperature so that it's a bit warmer as well. I'm just keeping an eye on the skin tones to see what, to see if it looks right. So, so this is before the adjustment. And this is after adjustment. I think it looks a bit too purple. So I'm just going to reduce the purple by a little bit. Beautiful. Ah, the computer's lagging. You can, you can see clearly the skin tones looks a lot better and a, a lot more natural when you have the correct white balance. Look at that. One last example here. In this shot, you can see that everything looks a bit orange. 
So what we're going to do again is go to your color wheels and change the temperature so that it looks a bit more blue. Oftentimes, when you move the temperature towards the left, towards the blue side, you're going to introduce a bit more purple in the shot. So you also need to compensate by making the tint more green. Beautiful. So this is before, but everything looks quite warm. And then after adjustment, everything nice, everything is nice and white. Now, remember what I said that in most situations, you want to have the correct white balance. Well, on the other hand, you can use incorrect white balance to accentuate the feeling of your footage. For example, this is a shot that we've done during sunrise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to color wheels and we're gonna go to highlights right here. And we're gonna shift it towards the orange side. As you can see, the whole footage is becoming more orange. Just a tad more. By doing this, we're kind of bringing the feeling of the sunrise more into the shot. Look at that. So, so this is before our adjustment. The shots looks good, but when you add in the adjustment, it's gonna make it feel more like a sunrise because we're bringing more orange into the highlights. So this is a trick that you can use. So another example we're gonna do is shots that are happening during blue hour or purple hour or whatever you call it. So this is a period of time right after sunset where the skies look phenomenal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to wheels and there's several directions you can go here, right? We can make the sky look more orange and then we can also make the sky look more purple as well just to make the shot look more aesthetic and the audience will feel more immersed into the frame so this is without the adjustment like it's already looking great but what we, what we want to do is to accentuate the color of the sunset so we're just going to bring in more color right here lastly the third essential ingredient is your colors so with colors, you actually have complete freedom to how you want to tweak your colors. So in this frame, we've got a nice looking pizza, but I feel like there's too much red in this frame. It does make the pizza look a tad bit unnatural. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this triangular icon again, and then we're going to go to hue slash saturation curves. So as you can see here, there are three curve over here. For the purpose of this video, we're just going to be focusing on the first two, right? So for hue versus hue, you have the ability to change the colors of the frame. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to click on the teardropper icon and I'm just going to dip it onto the red part that I want to change, right? And a red dot's going to appear here. So when you tweak it up and down, you actually have the ability to change the color of the red. You can change it to green or you can change it to purple, right? So regarding the red, I want to change it to more yellowish. So I'm just going to dip it slightly down, right? There we go. Beautiful. And next, I'm going to move your attention to hue versus set. Basically, this is a curve where you can control the saturation of a specific color. So in this frame, the green looks quite good, but I actually want it to be more saturated to bring out that color more. So again, I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and I'm going to click on the green and then a dot will appear here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it up and you can see it really increased the saturation of the green. So. This is without the color adjustment. And this is with the color adjustment. Look how big of a difference it makes. Now, let's look at this shot. It looks quite good, but I wanna bring out more of the colors. So again, we're gonna to go to hue versus saturation. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color of the sky just a little bit, just to make it more teal. 
and then I'm going to increase the saturation of the sky. Beautiful. Next, I'm going to bring out more of the colors of the grass, right? First, I'm going to go to the Huvus hue curve and see in what ways I could change the color of the grass so that it looks better. I think it really looks good in its original color. So what I'm going to do is go to the hue versus saturation curve and I'm going to try bring out I'm going to try and bring out more of the colors of the grass. Look at that. Beautiful. Now look at the shot before. And look at the shot after the color adjustment. It's making it more colorful. It's making it more immersive and making your viewers more interested in the shot. You know, that's what having great colors will do to your video. Here's a shot that I did in a wedding last year. As you can see, the girls look great, but I really want to accentuate the colors of their skin and also the greens that are behind them as well. So again, I'm going to go to hue versus saturation curves. I'm going to click the eyedropper too, point it towards her skin, and I'm just going to bring up the orange just a little bit. Don't bring it up too much because you're going to make them look like a red lobster. Just bring it up a tad bit, all right? And next, I'm going to click the greenery behind them. And I'm also going to bring them up, right? Just going to bring it up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now. Now this is what it looks like after the color adjustment and this is what it looks like before. So you can see like the colors are quite muted before but after the color adjustment I'm able to bring out more of the vibrancy of the shot. Now I do want to give you a bonus tip on how to make your color grading process a lot easier. It's called an adjustment layer. I'm going to put the link to it in the description down below. But what you can do with adjustment layer is that it allows you to color grade multiple footage at once. As you can see, this is a wedding film that I did recently. Instead of color grading each footage one by one, I basically color graded the adjustment layer right here. So once I color graded the adjustment layer, the color grade will apply to all the footage under this adjustment layer. But hang on, after doing this as well, I don't just stop there. I would still go through each of the shots to make sure the exposure is correct and also the white balance is correct after the adjustment layer is applied to it. Okay, so you have reached the end of the video and that's awesome because I want to share with you a LUT that I've created and I want to give it to you guys for free. Bear in mind that this LUT would only be good for you if you're shooting in S-Log. Now for those of you who don't know, when you shoot in S-Log, your primary image is going to look flat and unsaturated. So to apply the LUT, simply go over here, go on to, type in custom LUT, Put it over your adjustment layer or simply your shot and go to choose custom LUT and click on the LUT that you've downloaded from us. So what it does is it's going to apply the LUT to it itself and here in makes you can adjust the intensity of the LUT. All right. So the LUT converts Sony S-Log3 footage into Rec. 709. I made it so that it has really nice colors, especially bringing out the greens and the skin tones of the subjects in your shot. I've also adjusted the exposure so that it has a more creamier look to it while also adding a bit of contrast to the shot. Now, for those of you who's serious about taking your videography hobby to the next level, we also offer a filmmaker's kit, which contains templates that helped us get from beginner videographers to now building a six-figure video production business. In this kit, you'll find the email templates that we use with clients, video packages, and also our pre-production templates that we use for real life projects. If you're seeking a mentor, we do also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Link in the description down below. Anyways, thank you for watching the video and see you next time. Stay focused.